What's up everybody? Hey, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today we are talking hydrogen. A while back I had the opportunity to attend the Shell Eco Marathon Americas in Detroit, Michigan. While I was there, I got to talk to the Lindy Group. The Lindy Group is the supplier of hydrogen to the students for the Shell Eco Marathon Americas competition. Chris from Lindy and I had a great chat about hydrogen, whether it's safe or not, where today it really does win in the automotive world, what it's gonna take to make it to the next level and the next step and have a broader spectrum of hydrogen vehicles and a little bit about how it powers our cars and how we actually refuel a hydrogen car. Thanks to Chris, thanks to Lindy, and thanks to Shell for sponsoring this video. We're talking hydrogen, right? You yes. guys are the folks that supply the hydrogen to the students that is correct. at the Eco Marathon. Before we get into that, let's take like a 30,000 foot view of hydrogen, okay. what it is, and how that differs from traditional gasoline to power sure. our cars. Okay, so hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. So we're finding ways to utilize it more and more in different processes. So different processes, industrial processes, have used hydrogen for years and years safely, adequately, in any refining process, in any kind of uh, uh, heat treating processes, hydrogen is a critical element that we've supplied for years and years. Uh, bringing it to the transportation arena has really been a treat for us because it's something that's been possible for quite some time and it's really just starting to become on the forefront. Transportation, I'd say beginning around the mid to early 90s, uh, we started seeing some experimental issues, into uh, experiments into bus transport um, using uh, fuel cell technology. And uh, you know, we're really excited to see it really coming more and more focused and usable for the future. And we have actually today in California, any consumer could buy a Toyota Mirai. California has embraced retail fueling in California. My mother could buy a car in <laughs> Philip with 10,000 pounds of hydrogen to operate a vehicle for 300 miles. When we talk about powering vehicles, passenger vehicles, we have the traditional gas, diesel, yep. those are the two common, hybrid electric, even plug-in electric. How does a hydrogen powered vehicle differ from those other ways of propulsion? Sure. Ultimately, electric motors drive the wheels of a hydrogen vehicle. So we introduce hydrogen, uh, it goes through a proton exchange membrane that separates, you know, it creates uh, an anode and a cathode. Hydrogen uh, wants to meet oxygen on the other side. So we have air in the atmosphere, we scrub it to bring oxygen on the other side. So now you have two things that have affinity for each other, an anode and a cathode, same way as a battery, as a positive and negative terminal. Those things want to meet, use that potential to drive, you know, create current, to drive an electric motor. They meet, the byproduct is water. It comes right. right out the tailpipe. So these aren't combusted, hydrogen's not combustible Correct. or combusted in the engine. Correct. This is more of a hybrid-like or an electric vehicle-like Correct. setup. It's, it's a set up to create electric current. This device right behind here, we have people charging their cell phones and iPads on it. That's a hydrogen tank going across a fuel cell that creates electricity to charge. Years ago, there was some uh, models of BMW actually created a car that had a hydrogen combustion engine, but the, the, the economies of scale and really this, the onboard storage to get you the range that you want isn't there for that. What kind of range are we talking? I know it's not, it can't be measured in miles per gallon. Um, how do we measure fuel sure. economy in, in hybrid vehicles? The car that I drove two weeks ago, uh, it's between 250 and 300 miles per tank full. Right. So which is between three and a half to five kilograms. Okay. So there's a retail fuel station, uh, you pull up with your car, uh, you connect the hose, swipe the, your credit card, and you fill it within three and a half minutes, and you'll get 225 to 300 mile range out of that vehicle, depending on how you drive. The, the refilling process, from a consumer anyway, seems pretty straightforward. You plug in, plug in the yep. hose, and hit the button, and it does the rest. Literally. Primarily now, you know, I, I think in, in the segment, hydrogen is very small in the passenger car world, mm -hmm. but it seems to be bigger and growing in like public transportation and uh, right. electric buses. What's it going to take, do you think, to get the, I don't want to say the people on board, but yep. to get the people on board yes. with this these alternative fueling methods, not only hydrogen, but yeah. everything else. We have this concept of, so us with the, the retail fueling stations that we have, this newest one that we're having 
in California, in San Ramon, I'm going out there to commission it in a couple of weeks, is completely unattended. Nice. So coming to New Jersey, you're not even allowed to fill your own fuel. So this to me is a concept that is like, it's really cutting edge. You pull in from the neighborhood, pull, refuel it, swipe, it's all self-attended. But that model is a little bit different as a traditional gas supplier for us. Right. So this one-to-many, we're usually a function in an environment where our uh, client is an industrial you know, capacity. So we have a facility at BMW in South Carolina right. where they make the X5s and X3s. They operate their entire forklift tr- uh, fleet, 400 fork trucks a day, we fill with hydrogen. We call that concept the back-to-base scenario. So it's easy for me to have technicians and allocate the resources to maintain that equipment in this cutting edge environment right. effectively because I have that critical mass there. Similar as you mentioned with the bus transport. You know, it's a you know, it's a um, back to base scenario, you know, all the buses come back and they refill in the same spot, as opposed to, okay, now I have five gas stations, how do I allocate the technician base right. and how do I you know, basically lobby just like any place else, you know, there's, there's resource allocations that have to be done. It's been historically easier for us to have those concentrated areas where our customer is one, you know, like a BMW or, you know, an AC Transit is right. our, our big partner in the West Coast, um, as opposed to, okay, we're going to put a gas station in and our, our constituent base is the consumers. Really, the, the gap has been bringing like the brain power that you see here to the guys like me and you that know how to make things happen and make a right. car work or make it repeatable, um, make it a robust piece of equipment that's uh, good for industry and make it repeatable so and supportable. So that's kind of been the gap. Now you're putting like a computer out on an island <laughs> like these guys have in these cars and you know, it'll take many iterations before GM or Ford have right. one of these designs in there, you know, because you need to make it, you know, mass producible i will tell you california is committed and you know there's somewhere less it's like 40 or so stations out out there now but you could drive i mean uh one of my guys drove from san francisco down to la we're working on this this site so you can get there one of the things that you mentioned before is really kind of resonates with me and you know everyone embraces all these different technologies and it's kind of great that everyone's seeing these different technologies evolve the one thing that the fuel cell vehicle has that is a little bit better or different than some of the others is so you know i kind of like the tesla right with this right. ludicrous mode yep you know it's unbelievable like you it's like three and a half seconds or, or less the one thing that the hydrogen vehicle has it doesn't have to lug around these heavy batteries you know this is what you get on this thing right. so it's it's there it's self-contained so the hydrogen is the source it feeds an electric motor as battery you know reservoir for to operate all the onboard computers and things of that nature, yep. but it's not the critical aspect to it. You know, the sealed lead acid or the you know lithium ion batteries that will line all the other cars and take up storage space. I mean, this this uh, Toyota Mirai that I was driving, you look at it, you wouldn't even know there's anything yeah, different I, about it. Yeah, I looked it. at the one outside. What the a trunk, what you a open cool. the trunk, it's got a full trunk. Yeah. It, it's really something. So what does then, to, to kind of wrap this up, what sure. does the ability for these kids building these amazing machines what does hydrogen allow them to do that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do? Right, so they have choices of what kind of alternative fuels that they'll do. Uh, I think some of the characteristics of embracing hydrogen as far as it's got, if you can get it from a green footprint, so we produce it in a facility in Canada that takes it off gas of an existing process, but the energy that we use to generate the hydrogen comes from a renewable source at, uh, generated at Niagara Falls. Okay. So our piece of it is green, you know, and if we can get to where a windmill will create the hydrogen, you truly do have a zero carbon footprint, you know, fuel source. So pretty cool stuff. Thanks, Chris, so much for hanging out and chatting with me. If you guys want to learn more about Lindy or the Shell Eco Marathon Americas, there's links down in the description. If you have a question about this video, leave it down below. If you liked it, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. Always appreciate that. Don't forget to follow me on all the normal social channels right down here below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.